hello hello guys hope everyone's doing well happy and healthy so um yeah this video is two months overdue i know uh, a lot of you guys asked on instagram before about my birth story because i had a natural home birth uh, which a lot of uh, people showed interest into knowing like how did that happen because to be honest my plan was uh, if you are following my um pregnancy vlogs you guys know that i was registered in birth center and i was supposed to do a water birth but things didn't go as i planned because i had something called precipitous labor <laughs> let me see what this how do you pronounce that precipitous labor so yeah p-r-e-c-i-p-i-t-o-u-s precipitous labor i guess that's how you would say it. that's the best i can say so when a baby is born within three hours of regular contractions it's starting so isla was born within worth within one hour starting my contraction starting from beginning to end uh well she was born within one hour like whole process uh went within one hour guys um and i was like sitting in like hospital bed thinking how did that happen like how did the whole thing went this and i was Aaron and i was discussing how crazy morning was that so okay back to the uh, very beginning baby what is she doing okay so what happened was uh it was august 5th in the morning 4 a.m in the morning i woke up uh just with some kind of discomfort i don't know why what it was i cannot pinpoint obviously labor probably was already going on and i just didn't know that um so i woke up like four in the morning um yeah i think i woke up 4 15 in the morning not four um i don't exactly remember the time so four or between 4 15 something like that i woke up uh just to go bathroom um usually i don't wake, wake up to go bathroom that time so it was a little bit unusual for me and then <laughs> what, what are you doing little monkey so <laughs> hey G, she likes to climb on everything now baby so anyways i went to bathroom you know i just had to pee and i was like you know it, it can happen i just it kind of like gave me red signal like 4 a.m in the bathroom i just don't go 4 a.m in the bathroom i just don't wake up for in the 4 a.m. in the morning in discomfort and I cannot I couldn't pinpoint the discomfort but I know like I woke up in a little bit discomfort but there was no pain nothing um so yeah that's the thing and I went to bathroom I had just had to pee and I came back and I tried to sleep again within like next five minutes my contractions were like this like I'm not even kidding guys uh, let me show you guys you think I'm kidding I would show you guys my contractions a meter yeah whatever you call that app this app um so my first okay do do i have a time here let me see how do i show you um my time uh okay here you go contraction started coming in okay i went back to bed around 4 15 a.m um as uh, nothing else going on i was like you know what i'm gonna sleep again i'm gonna take a rest this whole week baby's gonna come by the way she's one week earlier so i was like you know what i'm just gonna take rest and and you know just that's, that's about it and then contraction started for 4 33 first contractions came in and that was 20 second long second contractions come in 4 36 that was 46 seconds then third contractions came as 438 that was 34 seconds uh 440 fourth contraction came it was 46 seconds uh 442 uh fifth contractions came it was 35 seconds um so and then six contractions 36 seconds seven contractions 36 seconds 11 contractions 15 seconds that's it I was going like this but to be honest despite the fact I did not have any break like big break in between the contractions I was still feeling every contraction was doable like I thought it just I knew labor started this much I knew labor started but to be honest way before, okay when I came back to my bed I had nausea like nausea like symptoms you know something like as if you are having a cold but you you don't necessarily have cold yet but you just have symptoms of cold so i was going 
so I was just, you know, I don't know what I was doing, but I was doing something with my nose and I felt like I haven't, but that gave me a red signal and I ignored it right there. Because I read somewhere when you're in active labor, you can have nausea-like symptoms and I just ignore it and I was trying to sleep back because I was actually sleepy. So I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going back to sleep. Um, and then within five minutes, I opened my eyes, my I opened my eyes literally guys like this because I felt contraction. I was like, wait, I was like, never mind. I'm just gonna sleep again. That was the third time I ignored my red signal. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go sleep back again. Within 20 seconds, another contraction hit, uh, contraction hit, and that was like another 20 second long or something, but that, um, that like a little bit more. And then, so within first two contractions, I was forced to breathe, like as if you would breathe in contractions. I started breathing, my body's automatically telling me to breathe heavy through your nose because that eases your pain, obviously. So, okay, I wasn't in pain, to be honest. I was in more, more like, um, like discomfort you know what i mean so my with my first baby i could tell contraction pain like how it feels this one it was like ah more discomfort you know what i mean like okay great amount of discomfort i guess uh, never mind i started looking on my notification and so on um so yeah that's how it, it felt and in the meantime i'm like breathing like this so that made my contraction so easy. By the way, nose breathing is very good, by the way, guys. You should breathe when you are having contractions. My body was automatically telling I should breathe, so I was breathing. And then I started uh, using sounds more because when you are more vocal, you are not putting pressure on your pelvic floor. You are basically letting that pain out. You're telling your brain to focus somewhere else. So that helps a lot, guys. So be vo more vocal. Um, watch some of those videos um, a lot of midwives will tell you that if you make some new hmm, like some kind of rhythm some kind of sounds you would make that actually eases your pain a lot i was automatically doing it guys i was not thinking what to do i was not strategic about anything that time i was just making more i was getting more and more vocal so my mom came from the next room because i was staying by the way I, uh, I was staying my mom's place and errol came from new jersey because your dad needed him a day before in New Jersey because their house was getting some work done so he came a night before he was planning to come in the morning if he would if he had come in the morning he would have missed the birth of his daughter anyways that was a blessing he came a night before he was so tired he wanted to sleep all day and this and that and, you know he, we all had uh, funny like literal plans for next whole week we didn't know like things gonna go like this um so my mom came from next uh no i think errol woke up first because he was lying next to me and i didn't want to like disturb him while i was going through contractions i was like no what this doesn't seem like it will just probably is braxton hicks but my i don't know my intuition is telling me it's not braxton hick it's the original contraction like a real contraction but i was like i would just keep ignoring it um anyways and then errol woke up and i told him i think i'm in labor um uh, let me start <laughs> let me start uh counting my contractions uh on these contractions i don't know you guys probably have this on iphone as well this is uh, android um app called contractions i guess I still have them and the, by the way the last contractions here is showing 519 after that I started pushing so oh my god I still like laugh on this story guys it was hilarious later on anyways so my mom came for next room she was right next door from us she's like what is going on I hear some sound oh, so I told her I'm in contractions Edanur was up in her crib she was up in her crib and play and pack you know making sounds pick me up I want to come out uh, she probably had a diaper, need, her diaper probably needs to be changed, but obviously I was not thinking about her diaper change that time. So at that time, I remember I was not able to lie down. That was probably between 10 and 11 contractions. I was not able to lie down afterwards. Um, so after, so I was, it was probably reaching four to uh, close to five. And I was holding onto Earl's hand like this, like, you know, like hard whenever contractions coming and I'm relaxing my body because I don't want to like tense up my body. So I'm just cleansing, uh, clenching my fist on him like this. And then at the same time, trying to relax my body. Um, G baby, eight minute. So anyways, I, yeah. And then after. I remember like okay how many contractions I have here total total 15 16 contractions 
um yeah total of 15 contractions i have um so basically then afterward i just letting my body go on him he's holding me like with my arms and i'm like okay he made um uh, he made his arms like this and i was like literally making myself fall down like cr literally on his arms and putting all of my body weight on him because i was probably 135 by the time i gave birth uh currently i'm 120 pounds so i gained about 15 pounds total um anyways 135 girl, pound girl literally falling down on him like this so he literally had to put me you know like keep me up um every time contractions come i was letting my body go like i don't know like my body's telling me let yourself go um so my mom was like my mom's in the meanwhile while, while all of this happening my mom is changing get a nose diaper probably want her favorite pistachios or, um sorry so baby okay so anyways my mom uh, in the meanwhile i'm going through these contractions and my mom is changing a nose diaper on our bed right next to us uh so it was a very chaotic morning so my mom is telling me while it was so funny while i passed the contraction i was sitting down on bed again trying to breathe and r prepare myself for the next contraction my mom is like i told you not to do lawn mowing night before it was hilarious i wanted to laugh but i could not it was because then literally the day before i was doing lawn mowing guys maybe maybe perhaps that was the reason my labor was came that quick because i put my myself and I put myself under so much pressure doing lawn moving. I was like, ah, because the grass has grown so much and Eliza was not home. She goes to work. So I was like, you know what? I'm free. Let me do the lawn moving. And my mom was like telling me not do, not to do anything right now. Just take a rest. But my, I've been very active my whole labor, just like the first time I was very active. Um, so anyways, I that's she said in the morning. I told you not to do lawn moving as if the baby's not going to come out if I didn't do lawn moving. So baby had to come out anyway so that was funny and she was like telling us to go 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 to your birth center you know you gotta go now uh you don't want to give birth in the car or anything so Arab was like let's go let's go but my inside is telling me don't go anywhere relax right in your house i don't know where it was but guys this is my tip please listen to your body please listen to your intuition when you're in birth do not listen to anybody else i i was like so i ignored my intuition i ignored myself again i was like you know what let's go we might be able to make it so why so my um so when you got get out of my room there there are four or five stairs so when i got out of the stairs there are literally six stairs maybe to go to the bottom floor um uh, and then the minute i took stairs i was like labor progressed even more i guess my pelvic my pelvic muscles even opened more my whole uh pelvic floor was probably open more my cervix was probably dilated even more because i felt labor is progressing very soon now at that time i probably felt only one or two more contraction the minute we opened the door like our front door like we went on a porch i lied down right there I told uh, Errol I cannot go anywhere. He was like, what do you mean? We have to go. Uh, and I knew in my head, I'm calculating, while I'm in pain a little bit, or in discomfort is a better word, I'm calculating in my head, the birth center is like minimum 40 minutes up, uh, far. So how am I going to make it there? I don't think. My, I'm, I could feel babies coming, you know what I mean? Even though I did not feel contract push that time. But I could tell my baby's going to come now, like now. I could tell that time. Anyways, I lie down on the French port, porch and here you go. Bam. Pushing stage started right there, guys. I was pushing involuntary. Like literally, guys, I was pushing there. Me without con telling doctors, push this, push that, all the BS I did first time. Never mind. Don't remind me of that. <laughs> so I my body's involuntary pushing. And Aaron already had experience with me first time in hospital birth. By the way, my first birth was six to seven hours total. Either six or seven, I don't exactly remember. Let's let's say seven hours and everybody's telling me that short labor and you would go in a labor pretty quick next time. So anyways, coming back to the topic, I Errol uh, asked Eliza, my sister, um, 
get me a towel he wanted to prepare himself he was like get me a towel in case baby comes in right now we gotta hold the baby now and uh, Aliza got a towel from inside and she put it under my head because I was literally li lying down on our front porch on the mat like my head was um actually I was feeling so good because porch was a little bit cold and I was like oh gosh it feels so nice and then she put the pillow like she made a cotton sorry no not cotton the towel on my, under my head and made it like a pillow shape it felt so good and then I uh, basically started pushing that time so that was the first time my water broke a little bit so I could I and I am not 100% sure I might have pooped a little bit there I'm not 100% sure I might have pooped uh they say if you poop while you're pushing it means you are doing right pushing so i guess i'm happy about that and not happy about that that i had a little bit pooped uh but anyways i gushed out a little bit not fully yet i could tell it came out a little bit so my lips are so dry guys i just went to take my that one i have okay so where where i was um i love when she reads book on her own she basically going through the photos and puts her fingers on because that's how i read to her so anyways guys um so yeah um that basically uh started my pushing stage and my sister was like because, okay at that time i was screaming okay screaming is not the right word you know how when you are pushing and you're making those grunting sounds um have you go have you like seen in gym like when guys are having big weights and then they make those grinding sounds i would say mine was pretty similar to that i was except that i was pushing a baby i was not lifting the weights so anyways i was making those sounds pretty loud five in the morning everybody was sleeping and neighbor came from <laughs> neighbor came from across the streets they were just trying to peek in what's going on they hear a woman screaming uh, I'm pretty sure we woke up the neighbor like left and right, but nobody came out from there, which is good. And anyway, my sister was like uh, almost crying because she just didn't know what's happening. She hasn't attended any labor yet. As a grown woman, she hasn't seen a woman giving birth. Yeah, that's where we stand as women, I feel like. We are so far apart from our bodies, I feel like. <laughs> anyway, that lecture I would give some other day. Start. Errol was lying with me down on the porch hold this time and my sister called the ambulance right away ambulance and then the funny thing was on the phone she's like crying my sister's in labor pains can you please send um ambulance right away it's so late and the woman on the other side of the line saying ma'am please calm down have you not seen women giving birth before that's pretty normal <laughs> so yeah aliza was like they insulted me i was like yeah that's true <laughs> so that was so funny i hold a second what is she doing Okay, she's lining up her things. Um, so basically, at that time, uh, she called the ambulance. Ambulance came within 10 minutes, guys. So 5 or 9, I think, ambulance came in. And by the time ambulance came in, they asked me to, can you get up? I was already pushing that time. Baby was probably, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think I kept pushing uh, involuntary. And the baby was probably... Errol said, by the time ambulance guy came, and Errol and they both lifted me up like the legs and he lifted me up with the arms i get thing and they um he said baby was probably already like pushing like out already push baby was already pushing out by the time they got me in the ambulance um made me lie down on the stretcher and then um that's it bam had came out like one push had came out and I don't even remember second time pushing out and then I just came out by herself so this one I this thing I remember and then basically that's it a whole story <laughs> done every day the, she came out right on my chest and I was like and I'm telling them about my social security and my birth date and everything like while I'm going through that I'm able to <laughs> see I found that very funny that I was able to tell all those things while they were asking me name and this and that everything all the you know information and then they obviously took her to Fairfax um I know where Fairfax because that was the closest only six miles away and the, the woman who was driving was a new ambulance driver that day like with us and she was like freaking out uh so errol told her please calm down like don't drive fast because <laughs> she was going really fast and yeah 5 uh, 29 i was lying down in hospital bed um 
they just uh, yeah by the way placenta came out right in hospital not in ambulance uh it took another half an hour for placenta to come out um and they they tried to give me liquid motrin or something because i was in a little bit more discomfort and a little bit more one or two more contractions came and then i told them for god's sake i don't need medicine placenta will come out on its own hospital is so quick to recommend you medicine please don't do that guys if you are baby if you are someone who do not like taking medicine please don't take it i personally do not like it and i told you guys about my original story how i took uh, epidural and i thought that had an effect on edanur i did not like it so from that day i already decided i am going for a natural birth but thank goodness it happened at home not even in birth center although i would have preferred birth center water birth but anyways guys placenta came out before she even tried to give me liquid motrin <laughs> my god so 529 they transferred me into the room that's all i remember they put the time out um oh no 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 not 529 521 her her birth time i think yeah she was born 529 so yeah do you see from 4 30 to 529 one hour that was hilarious guys everything got done in just one hour and everything moving okay everything was so chaotic and so fast that i still don't have like my i cannot wrap my head around the whole concept to this point still and uh, um so yeah they transferred it to the room six and i was like <sighs> lying down calm relax um she just came to see how much i was bleeding which was minimal breathing no hemorrhage nothing and then the nurse left us alone i was like looking at isla that until that time i haven't seen isla's face to be honest and that time i saw her face i was like gosh she's so pretty mashallah so <laughs> and then errol was holding her all whole time errol called his aunts in turkey they were like dying to see her they were dying to talk to me and then we're we that's yeah we had everybody families we're sending photos right away he called his dad uh open your camera and then he showed isla like literally on the camera and he was like what so because his dad was saying night before maybe she will come early maybe she will come early because i did not go this time with him to you know new jersey because obviously i'm almost i'm 39 weeks pregnant so for some reason his dad kept saying that she will come early and that she did come early that was the thing and he was like quite surprised the very next day errol got home and showed him uh the girl on video that was very you know cute thing and yeah so after that um i just stayed there one night um 24 hours is minimum you know and the same protocols they do lactation consultants come then some somebody else come god knows 10 people they send you in the room this is so uncomfortable that part like please let let uh, new moms rest and just don't keep sending people one and after another that's the only feedback i gave them when they asked me for the feedback like please relax on that part and i did not like fundal massage i don't think research shows that it's not effective in saving you from hemorrhaging but i told her do not do that on me third time i actually declined it i said i did not hemorrhage first time i know i will not hemorrhage now uh, oh baby so anyways and those are very uncomfortable massage they're trying to shrink your uterus uterus should shrink on its on its own time so anyways i ignored that massage i the only was uh, yeah the only bleeding was but basically the first pad you change and you have um in a bleeding and after that it just becomes like mini period in case anyone's wondering um so yeah and i ordered some food my mom sent bone broth soup from home she sent almond milk uh no regular milk but she made put almonds in there so i had that that was very nutritious um yeah baby and she's like making some let me get island so anyways guys afterwards i yeah there was nothing else going on everything was good oh yeah i can tell you guys so just because i told you guys in my previous post about breastfeeding um the whole lot of difference i saw between isla and edanur was that isla was, no, isla was more active um she was not sleepy and groggy or anything she latched right away and she took a classroom right away and the same night when i was in hospital she was latching almost all night guys i'm not kidding like after every couple hours she was latching 
and I remember I was quite sleepy but and I turned on the TV because I wanted to keep myself awake and I remember she was latching until 3 a.m. in the morning guys um, I just kept her next to me in bed and because you know they have rails on side so it's safe um, and I just kept you know feeding her um, so yeah that went very well in terms of her feeding and everything um, yeah and next day she just kept sleeping she did not want it to latch again that's a good thing so we got home absolutely fine she just kept sleeping and the very next day obviously when i got home i had lots of breast milk coming and then i just fed her then again next day um so yeah guys that's my birth story if anybody had i'm like dying to know is this this do you know anyone or did you have one precipitous labor like please tell me if you guys had one I want to make sure that I'm not the only one who had this uh, very, very different experience. Um, after when I went to my birth center again after six postpartum checkup, and she said very few women in her birth center over the years, like only a couple of handfuls of women had precipitous labor and they were ending up giving birth in car. I could have been one of them too if I left home, like, but I did not. So, yeah, and she was. Uh, she was like, Nimra, I wish she would have given a uh, water bar. She wanted me to see how I would be in labor. I was like, because uh, she said your your delivery, your pregnancy was great. Um, you did not look tired. You did not have any pains. You did not get bigger. Because my stature is small. So anyways, uh, she wanted to see me how I would be in labor. And that never happened. Um, so I said, yeah, Nancy, maybe third time <laughs> if it happens. But for now, um, yeah this these are the this mashallah this girl is good uh, happy and healthy um yeah if anybody of you have a similar experience let me know i would be very happy to know that that somebody else had the same experience as me um uh, so yeah that's uh, is there anything i missed if you guys have any questions please let me know i don't think i missed anything about my labor um yeah it was pretty quick one hour labor beginning to the end <laughs> So I don't know if I missed anything. I, yeah, I cannot think of anything. So if you guys have any more question, guys, please feel free to ask me um, regarding breastfeeding or regarding a birth or anything. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And if you are a new mom or going to be a new mom, um, I wish you guys a lot of luck, good luck, and hope you guys are having one better birth than me. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,